Hi everybody, welcome back. This is our last lesson. Uh, and I'm cutting this guy in half because it's way too long. So uh, I will not uh, assign you guys a, an assignment with this. You just got to take the notes on the first half and we'll finish it up on Monday. We'll try and have it online in case you guys want to get ahead also the second half. But it's way too long, you guys. I tried doing it on one. It's just, it takes me 20 minutes. So I'm going to cut it in half, you guys. So which of the following is, is not true about a normal curve, okay? Every normal curve is symmetric. That's true. Every normal curve is symmetric about zero. That's not true. It's symmetric about its mean. Uh, but zero sometimes isn't its mean. We have to standardize it first and use that z formula. z equals x minus the uh, mu divided by standard deviation. Then it is, but it's this choice B, okay? Everything else is true. All right, um, uh, so addition rules for means and variances and combining normal random variables. Okay, so this year, the number of X uh, of communication units sold by BBTP to DCHS has this distribution. Okay, you're going to pause and write all that down. Okay, and so here's the distribution, this number, probability, this number with this probability, and so on. Okay, and then to BVHS, it has this distribution. Okay, and you're going to pause and write that down. And uh, so we're going to calculate uh, the mean of the x and the mean of the y. Okay, remember, the mean of the x, you just multiply the number times its probability on the individual probabilities, and those add up to 5,000 units. So the mean of the y, this is to the uh, BVHS, uh, you get 450 units. Okay, so now BBTP, now we're getting being told that they make $2,000 profit on each unit sold to DCHS and $3,500 profit on each unit sold to BVHS. So estimate the total profit for next year. Okay, well that's easy enough. You just multiply the $2,000 times the average uh, amount, so $5,000, and then $3,500 times the other average amount, and you find out how much profit they made, $11,557,000 thousand five hundred gosh who is that bbtp by the way wow all right so adding a constant to the data it adds uh, that to the mean and we talked about this before remember i showed you that fancy model i've been working on for 50 years and it, i just fine-tuned it so well and i showed you when we did plus five plus five plus five and we took the average of that it just the, the mean gets plus five as well but um, uh, and so, so when you add something here, so when you're taking the mean of a plus all the x's, so all, you just add an a to all the x's, then it just adds a to the mean. Okay? So, uh, but the standard deviation, remember that model that I had? Say I had my hands all spread out, and the variance is like a spread, you guys, in which the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. And if I, you know, if I stand in front of the class with my arms spread out, and they're spread out right now, and I did plus 5, it would just take my whole arm spread out, and it would just move it 5 units to the right. But it's still the same spread, so it doesn't change. So neither does variance or standard deviation. So when you're adding A to your, this is my variance formula right here, then it's just my variance. It doesn't change the spread at all, okay? Remember, that's just full, it's just notations, you guys. Don't let these notations scare you. They're just notations okay multiplying data by a constant what that does is it multiplies everything the mean the variance and the standard deviation by the constant so here we go here's the formulas okay i'm going to still put that plus a in there so when i add a to it and then multiply b to it then it adds a and multiplies b to the mean okay when i do that with the variance uh, all it does is multiplies b and since variance is squared then so is the b squared remember the standard deviation is the square root of that Notice the A is not in here because it doesn't add. It doesn't change it that way. But when you multiply, it does. Okay, so we're going to read the first paragraph at the top of page 418, right underneath problem 733. So you're studying flaws in a painting finish on refrigerators made by your firm. Dimples and paint sags are two kinds of surface flaws. Now, not all refrigerators have the same number of dimples. Many have none, some have one, some have two, and so on. Uh, you are asked the average number of imperfections on your refrigerator. Okay, uh, how many total imperfections of both kinds, on average, are there on the refrigerator? Well, we need some data first, so here it is. So that's easy. If the average number of dimples is 0.7 on a per refrigerator, and the average number of sags is 1.4, then counting both gives an average, and this is where you pick up your pencil, because I want you to write this down. Uh, 0.7 plus 1.4 equals an average of 2.1 number of flaws per refrigerator. Okay, so uh, the mean of the sum of the random variables is always equal to the sum of their means. 
Alrighty, easy enough. So uh, uh, that's what that says right there. The mean of the sum of the random variables is always equal to the sum of their means. Okay, easy enough. Okay, so here's some more rules and I'm almost done. So um, uh, when we're adding standard deviations together, we, you can just go ahead and add them like this individually, okay? Uh, subtracting, now subtracting, yes, that's a plus sign and that's a minus. Remember, um, variance is squared, so it's, when you square things, they're positive, so that's why that's a plus right there. Okay, so they're both pluses right there. Also, uh, if X and Y have correlation, and that's uh, the Greek symbol rho, looks like a little P, um, uh, but it's a Greek symbol row. But uh, then, uh, then you if you put these formulas in. Now, you guys, uh, there's no way I can memorize these. The AP will give these to you. I'll give them to you if they're in your notes. Remember, you have open notes on this. So um, there's a formula right there. So uh, this is when we have the correlation P. Okay, and when it's minus, it's the same except this is a minus right here. Okay. All right, easy enough. And then uh, that, that row, remember, correlation is just some number between negative 1 and positive 1 that measures the direction and strength of the linear relationship between two variables. And this is a good spot to stop, so I'll stop here. And I'll try and post the other one, the other half of this uh, sometime tomorrow.